Good evening and thank you. Our programme this evening comes from the BBC Television Theatre in London. Now, half an hour ago, those seats that you're all sitting in were empty. All but one. Most of the lights were out, most of the staff were at what is known as the tea break. But two cameramen stayed behind. These cameras were all but invisible to anyone who was out front in this theatre. Now, we knew that two famous stars were going to pass through this theatre on their way from rehearsal. Uh, I was sitting there waiting for them behind that newspaper, wondering what was going to happen when they did come. Hello, Eric. Hello, Hetty. Okay. How are you? Thank Let's you. have some lights, please, may we? I know that you've been rehearsing all day and you're probably very tired, but we have a big surprise. Because tonight, Hetty Jakes, this is your life. You're kidding, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, of course. And hidden away here are all sorts of lovely surprises for you. You come with me. Oh, <laughs> Hattie, no time to get her breath back because you, the audience, came in immediately after that happened but she has agreed to delay her home going for the next 30 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, Hattie Jakes. <laughs> A rather shaken Hattie Jakes, I might tell you, but uh, here and now to start your story, Hattie, we have one of the most eminent names in the world of entertainment, the man who walked in this theater with you tonight, Eric Sykes. Hey, who's your friend? Who's your friend? Hattie Jakes. You. <laughs> Sit down, Eric. If you don't know Hattie Jakes, how do you do all these wonderful comedy shows together? Oh, I've known this for a week. I've been dying to tell you. I wish you had. Well, you know, you're probably, uh, there's going to be lots of people tell you how funny you are. I'd like to, to say something uh, off that doesn't happen on, you know? A little thing. When I was in the uh, hospital recently, I wondered why Hattie hadn't been to see me for uh, a few days. Eventually she came and started, she came to see me every day after that. Wasn't until after I got out of the hospital that I realized that why she hadn't come in the early part was that she'd been in hospital herself and didn't want to tell me in case I was worried about it. Now, this is the sort of one. See, I could tell you... I mean, have we got time? Uh, no. <laughs> now, I know, Eric, quite apart from gags, that you could go on singing Hattie's praises all night, but we do have other guests waiting to meet her. Oh, it's one of these dudes, is it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eric Sykes, for all your... Well, now, this is your life, Hattie Jakes. Sandgate in Kent is the place of your birth, and there you lived until you were two years old, when, on the death of your father, your mother brought you and your brother, Robin, to London. Your school was the Godolphin and Latimer School at Hammersmith. Now, great things were expected of you here in the way of scholarship, but your heart was already pledged in another direction. Uh, can you remember a time when you were not stage-struck? No, still am. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are, but from being a stage-struck girl to becoming a professional actress is a long and difficult step, even when one is as naturally talented as Hattie Jakes, and the Second World War didn't exactly help you to achieve your ambition. With London under constant bombardment from the air, you were anxious to play your part in the national emergency, and on May the 9th, 1940, found you enrolling as a VAD with the British Red Cross Society. Brook Green was the centre to which you were sent for training. It was here in 1943 that you last met your divisional director in the Red Cross Society, who is here again to greet you tonight, Miss Vivian Catlow. Now, I know that you were responsible for her training. Isn't that right, Miss Catlow? What happened when she, when she finished her training? Well, after she'd done her training, um, in the wards of Hammersmith Hospital. She became a mobile VAD and continued her work 
in the hospital and in the shelters in and around the area of Hammersmith. Is it the, the air raid shelters and underground stations and Yes, so on? indeed she did. Uh, she would often be called out to an incident, a bombed incident, and then come back um, and volunteer for hospital duty and go straight along probably to Hammersmith Hospital and go on to the wards and continue her work. She was always a great asset to us as a VAD in Hammersmith and as everyone can, always, uh, can imagine, always cheerful. Thank you indeed, Ms. Catlin. Thank you so much. Well, just as Eric Syke told us there a moment ago, maybe there's something else you didn't know about uh, Hattie Jakes. And her training as a wartime nurse may have stood her in good stead when in 1959 she burst upon an unsuspecting nation as the battle axe of a matron in the film Carry On Nurse. Morning, mate. Morning, Doctor. Screens are untidy, sister. Oh, I'll take them at once. Morning, Mr. Reckitt. Good morning, Matron. Your temperature's behaving very oddly, I see. Perhaps it'll settle down when I get up. Well, now, you're a brisk and professional matter. <laughs> In that particular film, left a very deep impression on one young actress playing opposite you. Quite frankly, Hattie, I was almost paralyzed with fright when I first met you. Well, in spite of her fright, she's here to greet you tonight from the Prince of Wales Theatre, where she's starring in Come Blow Your Horn, Shirley Eaton. <laughs> uh, Shirley, did you imagine that the real Hattie Jakes was like the uh, character of the matron in that film? I was sure she was. We first met at the studio on the set, and Hattie was going on like a real-life Corgan. And when she asked me to have lunch with her afterwards, I didn't dare refuse. <laughs> and like most actors, when they get together, you spent the whole of that lunch talking shop? No, we didn't. We talked about children. The problems of bringing up children and having a career as well. And Hattie was such a different person to what I thought. I discovered that Hattie's secret formula for being such a great success as a comedy actress and as a mother. She's a very real, warm, lovable human being. Well, now, Shirley, we have a car waiting to take you to your theatre for curtain up, and thank, thank you, you, Shirley Eaton. Thank you, Harvey. It's been more than I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 